Here we will learn about the elasticity of scale which is an important topic in the production economics. It is a kind of elasticity which is not discussed much but in production economics it has its significance and this is why we are going to understand it. It is basically the ratio just like every elasticity is the ratio of the percentage change in the dependent variable and the independent variable. So here the dependent variable is the output and the independent variable is input and we have to divide their proportionate changes or increases in this case mutually that is the proportionate increase in output divided by proportionate increase in inputs. Before we begin we have to make a plausible assumption which is uh, pertaining to the scale Whenever we study the effect on the scale, we assume that both of the inputs are increased by the same percentage or proportion. So since we are calculating the elasticity of scale, it is suitable to assume that both of the inputs are increasing by the same magnitude. So this is the proportionate or percentage increase in the first input. As you can see, the difference divided by the original value of the first input that is V1, the difference of the second input V2 divided by the original value of V2. Both of them are considered to be equal because in returns to scale we assume that both of the inputs are equally increased. So we can call them dV over V instead of two separate notations with subscript 1 and 2. So we don't use any sub subscript, instead we use dv over v. Now the formula becomes this. This is the proportionate change in output and this is the proportionate change in input. We know that this is the term we can use for it and we know about the dv over v term when we made the assumption here. Now this is the production function in its general form the output the inputs one by one and this is the production function which we can differentiate and uh, in this case the differentiation is for the sake of differential because we have two independent variables that is the two inputs and we want to observe their total effect on the output so it is not the rate of change, it is the change in the output due to the first input and due to the second input. So this is the process of taking the total differential. Uh, we have calculated the total differential here. We know that the derivative of the production function with respect to one of the inputs gives us the marginal product with respect to that input, which in this case is V1. So we write 1 in the subscript. This term remains the same. It doesn't change. So this term again can be written in this form that is marginal product of the second input that is V2. So we write it MP2. And this term again remains the same. Now we have introduced Q here because we are eyeing this formula in which we do not have just TQ. We have Q as well. So this is why we have introduced this Q here dividing the expression, this expression, throughout by Q. So you can see beneath every term we have Q. And after this, we introduced another term that is V1 here and V1 there in the numerator as well as the denominator in this term. So on the whole, it doesn't change because V1, V1 get cancelled out. And here we do the same, that is dv2 is now having v2 in the denominator and q is having v2 in the numerator. So this term and that term will be cancelled out and on the whole the expression remains the same. So we haven't violated the equality. The purpose here is that we can bring this term here and for that if I have dv1 over v1, dv2 over v2, I can consider them equal as I did before in that supposition of the returns of scale. So instead of writing these two terms, I am going to write dv 
over v here as well as there now these two terms are now common so i can take it as a common factor and remaining terms would be this out of the expression on the right hand side that we just developed now this dv over v if brought to the other side will appear in the denominator and this is the formula that we were trying to develop this is the other side of the equality which is the value and if i consider the left hand side this is precisely the formula of elasticity of scale which is represented with this epsilon so this is the formula of the elasticity of scale in which we have the inputs that is v1 and v2 we have their marginal products getting multiplied with them and we have output getting divided by them now we can generalize this formula because uh, there can be more than two inputs here we had only two inputs but in real life we can have multiple inputs so the formula can be developed on the basis of this term that is the marginal product getting multiplied with the factor of production under consideration divided by the output and this can be replicated for any number of the inputs so here we have done this mpi and then we have vi divided by q this is i which uh, ranges from 1 till n and n can be any positive number which is equal to the number of inputs that we are considering now the interpretation of this um, calculation that we did for elasticity of scale this is equal to 1 if it is equal to 1 it means that we have constant returns to scale definitely it is making sense because the pers percentage change or proportionate change in the inputs would be equal to the proportionate change in the outputs so this is what we see in the constant returns to scale and this is the text for this phenomenon when the percentage change in output is greater than the percentage change in input then the elasticity of scale should be greater than one because the numerator would be greater than the denominator so the ratio should be greater than one this is increasing returns to scale and when the percentage change in the output is greater than the percentage change in input the ratio should be less than one and finally it means that it is the decreasing returns to scale so keeping in mind this formula of elasticity of scale we can do the interpretation however we can calculate this value by using this formula which would be more uh, easy to calculate now the uh, empirical evidence on this uh, calculation that we did it is found that uh, for most of the industrial uh, processes we observe that there is increasing returns to scale however this is the empirical evidence which can evolve over time however this um, text basically suggests that the elasticity of scale is greater than one for most output levels it is because the industrial act, uh, units are basically aimed at producing large amounts of output and they are uh, using most of the latest technology due to which they are able to maximize the output with some increasing returns to scale moreover in the digital era we can expect that increasing returns to scale is even more in vogue because the ability to produce more with the same level of inputs is very much likely in this um, era where the computerized production or the digital goods and services are produced so this is the concept of uh, elasticity of scale which we have uh, understood here and which we have derived as well related to it would be a concept known as the elasticity of cost which is another uh, less discussed elasticity that we will do in the next video thank you